I see Mikey D, and this is the 0 0.9.5 uh, beta release, and a lot of changes have been put into this version. Um, lots and lots of stuff that's different. Um, so people who have not seen Retrig before, basically it's a setup script, and I'll just go through um, the basics of that quick and then just hop on to what the new changes are. So once you've cloned the repository from GitHub and you go into the actual directory that you cloned, it's a sudo dot forward slash retrig underscore setup dot sh. Punch in your password, loads the modules up, a little splash screen. So the basic screen here, um, maybe possibly in the future, this might be pushed into a package and then maybe some post configuration. But for now, let's say um, it's a dialog based um, kind of graphical installer. So the main install retrig is just going to fire off the installer, which I'm not going to go through right now. It takes quite a while. During that install, um, you'll get the opportunity to pick uh, a custom resolution as well as the supported controllers, which at right now it is PS3 wired and wireless as well as Xbox 360 controllers wired and wireless. Um, there's a number of things in the, um, the settings menu as well as you can pull the latest files from Git, um, update XBMC, um, a number of other things. Update the system, update XBMC since a lot of the packages we use now thanks to JC, a uh, fellow uh, contributor on, on the team a lot of the packages we have now are custom patched, so there's uh, dual monitor support, uh, fixes to um, enable better performance of the emulators, just a, a couple tweaks to get things. Uh, at the moment, nothing huge major, but um, some a number of good tweaks that you can find information on the wiki, if not, uh, hopefully soon. So in the settings page here, you can load ROMs, uh, change plugins, filters, and scaling, which is work in progress. You can change controllers, so if you get different number of controllers or you want to hook up a different type, um, you can go in here and change that. Enable SSH support, so you can uh, copy over ROMs with SSH. Um, the most popular and easiest way to copy them over is to enable the ROM Sama Share, which from any computer on your network, then you'll have a series of folders where you can dump the ROMs in. Uh, load BIOS files for emulators that require it. Check uh, those BIOS file integrity, which mainly is for the MESS emulator. Uh, backup existing configs is still a work in progress. Um, restore first run configs in case it will. Um, right now, Retrorig uses its own dot file. So in your home directory, you'll have a dot Retrorig uh, versus everything going into dot XBMC, which is the main front end of what uh, we use. So. And there's also, uh, during the install, we have to upgrade the Ubuntu kernel to 3.14. Mainly this is because there's a current bug actually close to maybe being fixed where wired USB PS3 controllers actually have to uh, have uh, either a patch applied or just upgrade to a newer kernel like we do here. And that way the USB PS3 controllers can actually connect right. Uh, otherwise they actually can't. Um, so hopeful for the future that that can go away. So back from the main screen here, um, you can uninstall as well, which will pull off a lot of, it'll ask you to actually keep your ROMs folders and a number of things. So uh, questions you can leave in the comments below. Um, I'll leave a link to the wiki where you can find a lot more information, but without further ado, we'll go ahead and just get into things here. So in the Unity bar, there is a launcher for Retrorig as well as a desktop icon that will be placed on the desktop. Uh, also, regardless of language, so it will go into a German uh, desktop folder as well as any other language. So let's launch that here. Uh, custom splash page, still XBMC. Don't want to take any credit away from those amazing guys um, that provided this multi-media uh, front end. So um, the main screen here is a lot different than the previous versions that were out. Uh, there's a new layout, new home screen here. You might be able to tell there's like neat little sound effects. Every option on the main screen, if you hit the left button on the D-pad, will pull up a submenu. So some don't have any at the moment, but the one that actually has the ones you want to be uh, concerned about is in the exit. If you hit left, you'll get all your turn off, restart, suspend, you know, hibernate, and you can hit cancel to um, get back, you know, to the previous menu. 
PS3 controller, that's the circle. Xbox controller, um, that's the right button, so the B button. So there's a settings page which is new. Um, this is very, very crude at the moment and it's being worked on. So in the emulator settings, there's you can launch the GUIs for uh, a number of the emulators. Now the reason for this, and hopefully this will be an actual in XBMC settings menu in due time, is because since we use a custom dot file directory, all your emulator settings are going into dot retro out of your home directory. They're not going into the typical dot config. This is meant to kept, uh, keep separation, make sure that the emulators themselves, um, if you had had them before, or if you want to uninstall retro, you're not destroying other configurations. And this was deemed to be uh, acceptable safety for now um, to keep things separate for the project. So uh, in the extra folder, there's only, I was going to put some things in here like Firefox web browser if you wanted to go out and visit, you know, uh, various ROM sites um, that have legal public ROMs, mind you. Uh, Ubuntu system settings, so you can go in here, um, we will launch the updaters for Ubuntu um, if you prefer that. So this is a little bit of tinkering and a work in progress. Utilities and tools, uh, the anti-micro program, which is very, very similar, but much more extensible than uh, QJoyPad. You, you can open that up and tweak some profiles. So back to the main screen. Uh, you can go into the XBMC regular settings and fiddle through things. Uh, one of the things that um, is unique to the project, uh, if you go into the, let's see here. Let's see, it might be an appearance here, yes. So in our appearance, um, the, the skin is actually, you know, we altered a few of the screens as well as, and let's see if we get back in here. Uh, system, that's what I was looking for. So in the submenu under system, um, a lot of these here you can go through and just normally look at um, a lot of the different options that you have as far as normal XBMC. And in the monitor here, this is where we actually, or JC on the team made some modifications. So we're striving very hard to make dual monitor support um, a reality with only X, uh, XPMC as well as the emulators. So um, the uh, anything that launches, so if you have an external display, we want to make sure it launches on the correct display and the correct dimensions instead of smearing across all of your entire screen. So... Let's go, Go Retro is gonna go into um, the ROM collection browser interface. This is natively uh, skinned through the, um, I think it's the Ace skin that we we're using right now. So a number of the quick things just to get you started. So just like at the main screen, if you hit left, you'll get your scroll bar. Left again, will bring down the pop-in menu. So you can go through uh, smart shortcuts, which would actually go to other things like your videos and movies and TV shows. Uh, your collection, you can change the view of what everything looks like. Uh, filters is where you're going to get through all your main consoles, genres, years, if you want to filter all the games out, if you have thousands of games. Art and add-ons, and there's not much in the add-ons. So if you go down through filters, let's say I wanted to get just, you know, Sega CD games. So we would get just Sonic CD there. Hit left again, bring it down. Um, there's a number of systems supported. I mean, I could rattle them off here and, and you know in succession, but these are all on the wiki, so there's a number here, even including uh, some fairly recent consoles in the past several years. You know, uh, there's GameCube in here. Um, Wii support's coming very very soon. Atari Lynx, uh, Neo Geo, one of my personal favorites. Um, Turbo Graphics slash PC Engine. Nintendo 64, Super Nintendo, and a number of systems. So in the future, I want to make this, um, and you can always delete these ROM collections by hitting the context menu on your controller. PS3, it's your square button. Xbox controller, um, that is your X button. And any number of these collections you can use here and delete them if you feel you don't want to have that huge list. In the future, I'm going to include a core set, and you can add more through the setup script. Um, that's open for debate, but um, that's maybe where I'm going to go in the future. So the games here, I can test a few of them out. Now, over a screen capture, 
Um, I'm going to avoid a 3D game since it might bog down the uh, capture here. So let's give one of these a try. Um, how about Mega Man 2 or Mega Man X2? Load this up. Nice little Capcom um, presentation there. Oh no, it's been six months since the destruction of Sigma. So, start screen, just demonstrate a game or two just to show you now some of the performance. I forgot this actually has a long intro, so let's skip out of that. So, um, you'll see a number of games here. Now, the artwork that pulls in here, I tried my best to adjust the scrapers so they pull in the best artwork from the available scrapers in ROM Collection Browser. There is an offline scraper for the main ROMs that you go through. So, Aero Fighters here, you'll see there's no artwork, but there's a description. The artwork itself, um, I have instructions for it, and if not, a link to it on the wiki. You can pull in the artwork. It is a very massive amount because you have to store it. It doesn't pull it in through, um, through the internet actively when you're importing. That's uh, kind of a shortcoming that's accepted for more, most users of ROM Collection Browser, and I might change that in the future. So some of the other ROMs here, um, the way we make a lot of this possible, so if I were to load... Um, you know, Doom up here. Uh, what fires off is a controller profile in the background, so you're able to exit every um, system with the center button, so the PS button or the Xbox guide button. Um, most of the uh, games that are retro, so to speak, like Sega 32X, uh, Super Nintendo, they'll use the D-pad. Um, the games like Nintendo 64 that had a joystick will use the actual joystick, and I mapped everything as close as I could to what I thought would have matched the original kind of layout, even though it's a different controller. So um, all these controller layouts are on the wiki, which the links are below in the YouTube video. And um, feel free to comment, um, complain, <laughs> uh, criticize. Uh, constructive criticism is very welcome on this project since I just started this in May. And there's a lot of work to be done yet, but it looks pretty good. It's pretty fast. The skin works well. Um, you know, good old Mortal Kombat there. You know, PlayStation game supports in here. So um, I hope everybody um, can uh, make use of this. And the main object of this whole project is to make it set up from the get-go. You install it. Your controllers work. Uh, the games work, uh, minus, I mean, I will not provide BIOS files because that's kind of a gray area. I know maybe some projects do. Um, you punch the games, you hit the PS button or the Xbox button to exit. Um, save states with the left, uh, left stick click and load games with the right stick click for most of all the emulators. Um, so I wanted to make kind of a clean, complete package without making you go out and uh, get this and that, set up Xbox DRV or any of that crazy controller stuff you do on Linux. Um, so this is mainly available for Ubuntu 1404 LTS to target a kind of a non-rapidly changing release. And I hope in due time, maybe some other volunteers, we can branch out and do um, a non-Debian kind of release and um, hopefully enjoy it. Um, yes, I realize there's other projects out there like Retro Player um, as well as the Raspberry Pi projects, but um, hopefully it's something a little bit different. The strengths, I mean, we rely on, on the actual emulator, so I can mobilize and take advantage of filters and scalings and plugins on individual emulators, rather than tie myself to Lib Retro and Retro Player. You know, God bless them, they, they do a great job. Some emulators do better jobs than other emulators, so I wanted to kind of expand and, you know, have access to everything. So uh, we added a lot of support in this native release, um, or this, this release here, PlayStation 2, GameCube, Atari Lynx, Sega CD32X, a lot of code cleanup, um, unneeded branches were removed. Let's see what else here. Um, there's PPAs now available, so um, we're starting to package everything. Many thanks to JC on that. A lot of updates to the skin, RCB clo or, um, ROM collection browser code, uh, hot pluggable profiles, uh, full screen window fixes, and sound driver fixes to allow SDL2. Um, graphics and sound and gamepad support for some emulator, an emulator or two that actually don't have it maybe yet in production. 
So this is Retrorig, uh, this is Mikey D. Uh, feel free to leave comments below. Um, also on LibreGeek.org, you can find a link to this as well, or the um, Retrorig project on GitHub. A link is also below. Uh, thank you for watching.